Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Cast HD. I'm Mark Gillespie. We're on location at the new Wild Turkey Distillery across the road from the old one, but you'll find out more about that on Whiskey Cast on the audio podcast. I'm joined in the sensory room by the master distiller, longtime master distiller, Jimmy Russell, the associate distiller, his son, Eddie Russell. And it's this time around, it's your turn to ask the questions. We solicited questions from listeners on the Whiskey Cast Facebook page. And I'm going to pose some of the questions to the guys here, and we'll get their answers to your questions this time around. Gentlemen, thank you for doing this, and I'm armed here with uh, the latest update from Facebook and the latest list of questions. And I have to switch to glasses for this one. The first question comes from William Brooks. What's the next Russell's Reserve going to be? Weeded or awry with more age? Uh, any takers on that one? The Russell's line, uh, you never know what we're going to do. We'll always have something special out there for you. You know, we did the 10-year-old bourbon. We did that six-and-a-half-year-old rye. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to age rye any longer because it's going so quickly. We don't have enough as it starts. But we'll come up with something that will be exciting and fun. Our next question comes from Scott Hartig. Scott wants to know why the Russell's Reserve, the bourbon bearing your name, isn't 101 proof as you've said you prefer in a bourbon. He's always found a lot of irony in that. Uh, why is the Russell's Reserve only at uh, 90 proof? Well, originally the first Russell's Reserve was 101 proof, 10 years old. And it's a thing that was discussed with my son Eddie here that we discussed a long time about that uh, we thought maybe going to 90 proof would reach a younger generation like him and all. We still have a wild turkey 101 proof, but the original Russell's was 101 proof. And still, uh, the 90 is a good proof for the Russell's Reserve, 10 years old. It's very mellow, very soft to drink, very easy to drink. The follow-up question on that is uh, from Devin Zell. They want to know if there's any chance that the Russell's Reserve 101 might come back. Uh, Devin says he only has one bottle unopened at this point, and he'd really like some more of it. Uh, I don't have too many bottles left myself either, but, you know, we may do something maybe as a special bottling. I, I don't ever see Russell's going back to 101 permanently, uh, but good suggestions. We're always looking for good suggestions, so that might be something maybe we could do a, a special bottling of. And that was also the comment from Wade Woodard. He wanted to know if either, either of you are going to be attending Tales of the Cocktail next month in New Orleans. And he says, as noted, would love to see you bring back Russell's Reserve at 10 years and 101 proof. Will either of you uh, be at Tales of the Cocktail? Both of us will be there. As far as we know right now, we're both planning on being there. The next question comes from Shelley Brisbane. She's also heard that you believe 101 is the perfect proof for bourbon. Does the same apply to rye whiskeys as well? I think so. Yeah, I like the higher proof, or the younger generations like the lower proof, but uh, I like it's around 100 proof. You know, I guess it goes back to old times. When I first started in business, all bourbons were bottled at 100 proof, or wild turkeys always been 101. There was no 90s or 86s or 80s or anything. When I started, it was all bottled at 100 proof. Everybody felt that was the ideal proof. But now with the younger generation, all you know, we, our palates are changing. We need to meet the demands of the younger generation what their palate can stand. You got anything on that, Eddie? <clears throat> Not really. Uh, I think the rye, I mean, I love the, our Russell's rye, the six and a half years old, and it's at 90 proof. Uh, you know, I drink a lot of 101 myself. I love the rare breed and the higher proofs, but, you know, it just depends. It just depends on if, you know, if somebody's palate's developed enough to where they can taste all the good taste in there or they need a little lower proof. So, you know, anywhere from, you know, as long as it has the great flavor, for me, the proof's not, the, not a huge concern. John Long has our next question. Is the eight-year-old 101 anywhere to be found, or has that uh, been replaced by another expression down the line? Uh, you have to go to Japan to get that one. The eight-year-old 101. Right now, that's the only place we're selling. Any chance of uh, wider distribution for that at some point? Uh, maybe internationally. I don't see us going back to it here in the States right now, but maybe internationally. It's going to have, yeah, our regular model one's going to average about eight years old. Yeah. So that would be pretty much, that would satisfy that taste yes, essentially yeah. as the eight year old. Let's ask one now from David Fowler. I think I know what the answer is going to be, but I'm going to pose it. 
Any plans to make a bourbon similar to Four Roses, Buffalo Trace, etc.? I have a feeling you're going to tell me that you make wild turkey and it doesn't matter what the other guys taste like. You want to make wild turkey. But I'll let you answer that question, well, Jimmy. We make wild turkey the old-fashioned way. We want the body. We want the flavor and all that. And the old saying is, the wheel's not broken, you don't fix it. So we're not trying to do anything. We're going to keep the same old standard wild turkey. If everybody's bourbon tasted the same, you wouldn't have any choices, you know. So why would you want everybody's bourbon to be the same? That's the same way with us, you know. We, for many years, all we had on the market was Wild Turkey 101 proof. And then we come out with our barrel proof bourbon, straight out of the barrel, small batch. And then we come out with our single barrel Kentucky Spirit. And then we come out with Russell's Reserve small batch. And then we have American Honey Liqueur bourbon liqueur, and you know. To meet the demands of the people, the generation after generation, their taste buds changed to meet what they like, and uh, this is what we're trying to do. Donald Galligan has our next question, and I think this one's going to be an interesting one. Does Jimmy ever drink anything that is not made by a wild turkey, and if so, what? Iced tea. <laughs> and he's not lying either. That's a, it's either iced tea or bourbon for Jimmy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And our final question comes from Australia and Matt Wooler. Is it even possible to make it any more delicious without having Jimmy bathe in every barrel? <laughs> no. Who says he doesn't bathe in every barrel? <laughs> no, we, we'll continue to do that. Australia's a big market for us. We really enjoy it. Eddie and I were just over in Australia maybe nine months ago. And we, we really have a lot of fun over in Australia. We do a huge business in Australia. You're saying, who says he's not doing it? Are there any other secrets you want to disclose about uh, what goes on here? I'm not saying yes or no, but I would not ever say no to anything with Jimmy and Wild Turkey. <laughs> Thanks for sending in your questions for Jimmy and Eddie Russell, and uh, thank you guys for uh, agreeing to answer them for us. Stay tuned for another episode of Whiskey Cast HD coming up soon, and for more cask strength conversation, as well as stories about whiskey and the people who make it, join us on the web at whiskeycast.com. I'm Mark Gillespie.